Good evening. Sorry about uh, being late. A few technical issues right at the last minute. The PC has died, so I had to run in and get the laptop. Um, but thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, mix up again tonight. Um, I'm live tonight. Uh, swap with Wayne because I will be flying to Scotland tomorrow evening. Walking away, let's bring in the earworms. So rather than the two Ronnies, tonight we have the two Waynes. So uh, the Wood Jedi himself, Mr. Wayne Clasper, and Mr. Big Feet is Wayne Gilbert. So they're going to be looking at the chat. Um, I can't see what's going on in the chat at all tonight because I've just had to come over for this. So I'll go over to the lathe. Hopefully this is going to work. Um, <clears throat> you got a live cam? Go on, be nice to me. Hey, we're just going to rattle through with it tonight, and uh, hopefully it will stay. So on the lathe, I have a piece of, I believe it's lime. Um, I bought it at Yandles ages ago, um, but didn't have a didn't have a name on it, just a price. Um, it is approximately eight and a half inches square, and we're going to have a go at a piece of wall art. Uh, some texturing, some colouring. Um, I've only done one of these before, um, and that was inspired by Wayne. Uh, so I thought, let's have a go at another piece. So I'll start doing some turning, and the guys in the chat can look after you. Evening all. Um... In the chat today, we've got uh, Wood Wizardy by Colin in at 6.22 p.m. Colin, have you got no else to do? That was a do? bit keen, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, we've got Martin Breeze. <clears throat> got Tommy, Tommy's Workshop. Nice to meet you over the week, Tommy. We've got Gerard French Turner. We've got me. We've got AGK Woodworks. Hi, Andrew. And... Uh, uh, John Scarborough, we've got Barry Chitty. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Mark L. Then Wendy, Toonpish Crafts. Hi, everybody. I'll be back in a bit. Hi, Wendy. James Crawford is in. Tony Smith. Wendy Wood Turner. Woodworm Paul. <clears throat> um, yeah, we we'll go further down. The lovely Jennifer Crafting Creations. By the way, we've got Auntie Val's in. Uh, just watching, watching on the TV in other room. Uh, Douglas Mugnam. Susie Swiss Wood Turner. Evening. Yeah, Doug Miller at Wood Spun Round. Uh, got, uh, go uh, Robert Dolman's in, and the lovely Karen. Uh, any more. Um, Douglas Munham. It's Douglas Munham, as I said. Um, John N. Andy H, it's returning. Nice to meet you again. Hi, Andy. And uh, Dave's Creative Metalwork. Ah, Mr. Mewitt. Yeah, that's uh, one of your friends, isn't it? It is. So, Dave does uh, metal art uh, using old horseshoes. So, go over to Instagram. Dave's Creative Metalworks. Um, and check him out. He's getting a bit disheartened at the moment. Doesn't seem to be selling lots of his work. And some of the stuff that he does is just awesome. It's simple, but yeah. I'll make a note of that. And I'll, I'll be sure to give him a follow straight after the show. And, uh, and anybody else you see in show, see, check him out on Instagram or YouTube and give them a follow as well. Um, the park will turn, it's following and the subscriptions are always appreciated. Yeah, and uh, 
that is it up to now. Unless I miss somebody, if I miss you, please get a shout out. But don't tell me off. Susie's asking how you got to fasten to the lid, Scott. So um, all I did is on the uh, on my drill press, I've just drilled a 50 mil uh, hole with a force and a bit, and it's just held on the chuck like that. Um, and then depending on how it comes out, depends on whether I turn the back off or whether it goes to the fire pit. But we shall see. We're just going to do some simple beads and coves. Um, bit of texturing. And, uh, a bit of colour. Do you find texturing easy on, uh, on lamb? Or, uh... I've never, never done it, as I said. This was a board I bought at Yandles. I can't even remember what I bought it for. I think it was the price. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was cheap. Uh, we'll make you a Yorkshireman yet. It's using all that Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire's rubbed on it, on you? Is my round. See, I'm hoping this is going to be a bit my wife likes because Wayne sent me a bit. Quite how long ago was that, Wayne? Um. And it never made it to the display cabinet. It sits prior to place in the dining room. It's not even in the display cabinet. She's got it on the sideboard. No. All right, so I'm just going to turn the lathe up because we're going to be cutting a lot of air now. Long time since you'll cut your hair, Scott. Do you know, I was going to have my hair cut on the way home from work tonight. I drove past three barbers at four o'clock in the afternoon and they're all shut. Probably just looked to you, so it's not worth opening for that little bit. <laughs> How are we doing on the end there? A little bit more on there. Sorry, Wayne. Hampton Wood turning. Right. Michael McEwen as well. Hey, Michael Vince. McEwen's just come in. Right. A little bit of tear up, but I think we'll probably Tip's get away with that. Come in as well. Evening. I'm not too bothered about this out of edge because we're going to uh, use the proxon on that. But sanding pad might help, mightn't it? <laughs> Don't think Velcro is going to do much. I did that. Not so long back. So the big rubber mark that across the work. Oh. 
And Wendy's back. Extractor. So has everyone recovered from makers? Uh, is that us themselves or us bank balances? <laughs> hey, Joey's in. <laughs> Still Joey! Joey! Hey, Joey. Jewelry's wood turns in. Scott, I'm going to drop out and come back on my laptop. Oh, mate. Is wood turn. I saw you float. It says I saw a few, a few of you floating around. Make a central. I can show you. I, 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 I wouldn't have been floating. I've very. Not with I thought way. you had those hover trainers on, Wayne. <laughs> if I got hover trainers, they'd probably blast off at stalls away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, a few people did say that they saw folk, but they were too shy to um, say hello. Don't worry no, about definitely. it. Definitely, honestly, just say hello. Hello, yep. these people appreciate it. Appreciate it. They like them themselves. Really like to meet the the audience, but come in and see them every week. We stick by them every week and watch. Watch the the uh, productions. Uh, it's as big a day for them as what it is for you. Right, let's just let one back in. Hang on. There we go. What? Do you know that actually looks on the mic? That's better on the mic. Looks better on camera than it does on the uh, in person. Obviously, when you are standing the edges like this, just be uber careful. I'm quite liking that. Right. So we're now go we're going to pop some texture on. Um, I've got a couple of different texturing tools that we can do on the inner bit, this outer bit. Um, we're just going to use the Proxon um, with a little, I believe this is a Proxon blade, not an Arbitec blade. But we'll stick some, um, some texture on that. Turning the bay. Barry's just come in. Hiya, Barry. Wendy, the wood is Scott, he thinks. Is there uh, lame, I mean. I think it's lime. Um, Hi, Andrew Wava. Again, when you're using the Proxon, then uh, safety glasses are a must, just because it throws chippings everywhere. And the last thing you want is a bit in your eye. Surprising with Proxon, how quick it eats away at the wood as well. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm literally touching it here, and it's you can see the depth of the... Uh, Yeah, no, Valerie's 
Valerie's got a prox on an occasion. She lets me take you out of the box and look at it. As long as, it, as long as I don't plug it in. Mine spends more time in its box than it does get used, and I need to use it more. Brian at Artwood Turnings in. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. The other thing with the uh, props on um, is oh, the vent. Well, the just come in. Oh, yeah. The vents are quite high up, and I tend to hold it and cover them up, but you need to be able to make sure you're getting good airflow into the vents. How's that looking? Joey says he's got to run guards. Works calling. Cheers for popping in, Joey. Oh, okay. Unplug that. So to sand this and get rid of all the whispery bits, I'm just going to use a nylon uh, brush in the drill. Now you can get these at tool stations or your local DIY shops Michael Hill things just come in. Oh yeah. Can't be both well. I really must get my spindle lock fixed. So the next tool I'm going to use uh, is a texturing tool that I bought when I first started turning. Um, and again, it spends more time in the drawer than getting used. Um, and it's made by Henry Taylor. It's a decorating elf. has different uh, heads that come with it. Um, so we use this in the middle. Henry Taylor, another Sheffield, quality Sheffield company. Rory's wood terms asking if you're putting any colour on it, Scott. I will be colouring it. I'm going to texture it first. Um, then it will get sprayed black. And then we're going to use Joe Sonia's iridescent paints to uh, colour it. Roy's to buy his in. Hi, and Roy. Ben Jammon has just come in as well. Ben wants his walnut fix. All right, okay. Um, now, this texturing tool, I'm not sure who makes it. Um, Looks like a Sorby one. Yeah, Robert Sorby, it's the one I've yeah. got. Good yeah, the Sorby, Sorby miniature one. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how long I've had this one. Um, but again, it went to makers, never got used.
on that gimp. Drury's asking, is the texturing tool a tricky tool to use to get good results? No, it's not. No, no. What you've got to do is run the run the lathe at about 500, have the tool rest so the stem of the texturing tool goes in horizontal. And what I usually do is use it bevel down between sort of the top of the tool being between one o'clock and three o'clock for different results. See, that's the problem I have, Wayne, is the uh, brass screw comes up. <coughs> See, mine doesn't have that. Mine's got an Allen, Allen screw on there. Yeah. I quite like that. Right, so we'll give that a quick going over with the drill. I'm going to swap nylon heads. So I've and got... Andrew is saying that it's my fault because of the jaws on your pants. He's hooked on them now. I think everyone is. If you do uh, decide to go over and get some jaws on your pants from Joe on your <coughs> case shop, do be sure to mention Wayne. Um... I'm sure there's somewhere you can leave a comment. I should take these sheds in. Hey. So I'm going to stop for a minute. And um, I've got to say a massive thank you to Ash. Um, Ash, quite often now, um, does a buy me a coffee uh, and a considerable amount. And it's really appreciated, Ash. He put in last week's, he's my number one fan. And I think I'll let him go with that. But yeah, thank you very much, Ash. All right. So before we joe Sonia, I'm just going to give it a coat of um, acrylic sanding sealer. Just make sure that's got everywhere. And then we're going to use chestnuts ebonizing lacquer. Colin says, Joe Sonia's are awesome. So before I saw um, Wayne use Joe Sonia's, I used to use the chestnut ones. Um, and the Joe Sonia's a totally different kettle of fish. Much better results. Um, That's because it's a different type of paint. Asha Carty says... Shed says thank you for all the demos. You're welcome. Next week we'll be back to the uh, normal Thursday night. Um, and also next Saturday is the next uh, virtual crafty. So 16 different 21st. Well, oh, that's come round quick, hasn't it? I thought it was the week after. Sure, it's next week. Definitely the 21st. If this week's the 14th, then... Mark Stroughton's in. Hi, I Mark. Was for, I thought it was the 20th. Hiya, babe! No, Jamie said to me the 21st. It's, uh, unless, it's, wizardry, unless it's changed. The Wood Wizardy Bar Collins says Deb thinks that looks awesome. 
Cheers. Mark L says that's a little different use of the texturing tool. Um, I have one that I made from Mike Pieces video instructions. I use it with the tool rest below center and the tool that I wrap at an angle. Yeah, I go by uh, the Robert Sorby videos. So just be careful if you are using a heat gun to uh, dry the ebonizing lacquer. You don't want to get too close, otherwise it will bubble. Is that your missus' embossing heat gun, that one? No, nah, this is my one. <laughs> 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 yeah, go on then, start it. It's purple. <laughs> I had a black gun. Have you before. just... Uh, have you just drilled a hole in the back of this for a mortise to fit into? Yes, mate. A chuck to fit into? Yep. Yeah, it's just Drury's asking, that's all. What he's yep. done, Drury, is drilled a 50 mil hole in the back with a force and a bit, and that uh, so his chuck expands into it. Okay. How's that looking? So we're going to start with some green Joe on your paint. I do like this one. I like the green. It's uh, I like everything green. AJ K Woodwork says I did a practice piece on them, and really little is more. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And all we're going to do is we're going to apply it over. Still a little bit tacky. Apply it around <coughs> the outside, um, but just using a bit of sponge. This comes from Wayne's favourite uh, craft supply shop. The range? The range. <laughs> we don't tend to go with range that much because uh, in Sheffield, the, the range, it's F is just too close to get wheelchair through. It's a nightmare. And, uh, yeah. I usually tend to go on it with that big sign outside saying sail on. <laughs> oh, Donna's in. Love Angel. Oh, yeah, Donna. She's on the bus, so she won't be talking or reading much. Let's all put things in chat to make uh, Donna laugh. Laugh out loud on the bus. Let's. Put, so, uh, what colour heart should we go for Donna? Let's go. Purple hearts for Donna in a chat. Go on. It was cool to meet Donna at uh, as Wayne said to meet some of the people that come in and support you, watch your lives it was awesome. Um, so if you do ever see me at another event, just come up and say hello. I don't bite. It just depends. I've seen you with a sandwich. <laughs> Um, so I am hoping to get up to the Taylor's Murfield open Unless day he... on the 16th of July. He doesn't bite unless your surname is Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Cream, custard. <laughs> um, we're well, failing at the Chestnut Weekender at the end of July down in Swindon. That's set to be a good weekend. Lots of awesome demonstrators on. That's it, Taylor Murfield. You'll see uh, Jennifer and Mark will be there, no doubt. And, uh... Donna says, I love purple. So, right choice of colour, Scott. What's that looking like on there? Ah, cool. Right, what should we go for next? Let's go. Do you know, I haven't used these ones yet. Got to have a bit of blue, haven't we? A bit of violet. What 
Wayne, you'll be able to help me. I haven't used these yet. Are you, these iridescent, these ones, or are these just acrylic paints? No. No, they're just acrylic paints. The, only, the iridescents are in them pots that you had in earlier on. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Gerard the French trainer says you were going to come to see you all, but the airplane ticket came too late in the post. Laughing. Emojis. I'll what? try some of the uh, rose gold. Right, Drury's would turn. Right, can, Drury's would turn has asked a question about Joe Sonia Paints. First off, can I ask, where are you, Drury? Where in the world? Marsh Stoughton says, hopefully, Wayne, you know, where's it on about Taylor's Murphy weekend? I've just put an holiday request for the weekend. That would be great, that Mark. Right, Mark L is saying, Wayne, what makes the Joe Sonia Paints different? They sure would produce some awesome looking results. The thing that makes them different, Mark, is that the cluster is an interference paint, which is why you get all the, the shadowing and the, the depth within the, the paint when you're actually putting it on a piece. That's the iridescence that class doesn't interfere. And the acrylic that Scott's putting on at the moment is just an ordinary uh, metal acrylic, metal coloured acrylic. Right, Drury, uh, you're in base and stoke. You've got a couple of options. You can go to Joe Sonia's UK shop um, online and actually buy them straight from Lynn. But seeing as how you're in Basingstoke, you could have a trip down to the wood turning shop in Alton, the one that Martin Saban Smith uh, runs, and he sells Joe Sonia's there. Colin says he's hoping to go to Chestnut Weekend. Do we a bit of luck? Deb will come too. Well, I hope she's well enough. I hope she's well enough, Colin. Yeah. Let's go for a bit of the blue iridescent. Douglas Mungnum says great effect so far. Thank you. See if you are you going to put it on with a brush, Scott? Yeah. The right. blue See I am. if you can get the brush very dry. And yeah, see if you can get the brush very dry. It was dry just a, brush a smidge it. of paint on and put it on that. Yeah, dry brush it on that uh, second texture ring. This one? Or this one? No, the outer one, sorry, the outer one. Yep. I'm going to just throw for a second there. Mark L, does anyone carry them in the US? They're actually made by Chromacraft. So I would imagine you can get them through them in the US. Think, because this yeah, is, it is a US product. It's not a UK yeah. it's not a UK product. Yeah, Joe Sonia herself is, is American, isn't she? Uh, it's a, I think it's a he. Yeah, I thought it was a she. Yeah, but, I remember yeah. reading up on anyway, that that's by the by, but no. they are you can get them through Chroma. I'm a big fan of uh, dry brushing techniques. Um, so it took me a long time to learn because I'm I might put have brush up and slap it on. It's all on my hand, but hey ho. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a light at that end of the um, lathe, Scott? Uh, the teal stock end of the lathe. How's that? Does that interfere with the camera? That's no, that's perfect, but from from me. Oh, that's I, that's better. That's a hell of a lot yeah. better. That is. I know on the um on the overhead, it, you, on the overhead, it tends to flash and flicker, and you know I can see what I'm doing now as well. Right, Donna. Um. Get in touch with Mark from Shop Dog. 
Um, because I think he'll be going to the same barbecue. He's, I'm, I'm certain he's getting an invite anyway. And he doesn't live far from you anyway. Drury's wood turn. Do they dry fast? Yes, they do, Drury. Yeah. It doesn't take them very long to dry at all. I can usually get a, a piece finished in an hour's live and start to lacquer it. So I've just got a bit of acrylic that I'm using as a palette and I'm dry brushing over here and as soon as I'm getting a bit over there and doing it on the lathe, it's it's drying. How are we doing on time, folks? Uh, you've just gone caught the name. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> what do we reckon to gold on this other textured ring? Yeah. Oh, I'm just just looking into it uh, conservation. It looks really well up Big Teller, Scott. Oh, really well. Right, let's clean my palette. So Drew, Drury's asking, uh, how will you finish the underside? So the back piece, depending on uh, how I like it. Um, if I like the finished piece, then I'll sand the edges um, and then I'll flip it over. I'll probably put it in my donut chuck and just take the back out. Um, there you go. Gav's just come in. Hiya, Gav. Right. right, Colin might know, uh, sorry, Scott might know the answer to this. Colin's asking... How much does it cost to fly to Scotland? Uh, it depends uh, on how soon you book your ticket, what time Colin, of day. Colin, it, he, right. Here's an answer for you, Colin. You see that search bar at the top of the chat, at the top of the page? <laughs> Look on EasyJet. <laughs> yeah, it, it a lot depends on time of day. Um, how soon or how far in advance you book it. Um, and if you're going to book any hold luggage or anything like that, do that well in advance. Um, let's try and have a dry brush that. Donna Love Angel says it looks marvellous and she loves it. Oh, thank you, Donna. Yeah, and then she says, then she says she'll be back soon. She's about to get kicked off the bus. <laughs> oh, no, she's about to get off. <laughs> I thought it was only London to kick people off the bus. And doors just come in as well. Oh, yeah, door. Before. Door 60's come in.
If anybody is, wants gear. to try iridescent paints, but they can't afford them, um, you, if you've got any ordinary acrylic paints, you can buy an iridescent medium to go in ordinary acrylic paints. It doesn't make them the same as Joe Sonia's, but it does produce an iridescent effect. Jero says EasyJet are cutting down passengers number 150 per plane instead of 156 as they're using three staff instead of four due to staff shortage so they remove six, six seats from each plane. Yeah, the back row they've moved, removed. As long as it's not pilot seat, it doesn't really matter, does it? Nah. I must check what terminal I'm flying out of tomorrow. Now they've well, the way that Mark's saying that, right, Mark's saying that's some interesting math. Three people can take care of 150, but it takes four to take care of 156. The way they work it out, Mark, is that they have one member of staff per 50 people. That's the way that it works out. So anything over 150 people, you need to have an extra member of staff. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking, looking pretty cool. I caught on it. Oh. Yeah, right. Lacquer. Taught him everything he knows. As I said, this bit was inspired by you, Wayne. No, I, did, I, I just didn't teach him everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to do this by watching you, so, and I must say, this has turned out much better man. than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just Chestnut's uh, acrylic gloss lacquer. like this you just play to your heart's consent and yeah there's no right or wrong uh as long as it stays at wall it's right if it falls off it's wrong <laughs> uh, so we'll give that a couple of minutes any other questions uh, <coughs> how many <coughs> coats of lacquer do you use how many coats of lacquer will i use i will follow what the wood jedi yeah. does himself uh and it's seven, isn't it, Wayne? Uh, it's usually about seven, I do. Yeah. Uh, Su Susie is asking, um, do you always put lacquer over painted pieces or could you wax it? Or would the wax come off after a while then take the paint off? It really all depends, Susie. If it's a textured piece like this, I'd probably lacquer it uh, because if you use wax, o wax over a textured piece, it gets tends to get stuck in all the bits of texture and you have a nightmare trying to clean it out. Yeah. If it was a plain painted piece, then uh, you have got the option of either using lacquer or using wax. Right. Where's, where's my pink heat gun or purple heat gun? <laughs> what I do is I'll, I'll leave it on the chuck, but I'll take the chuck off the lathe uh, just so I can show you on the camera. What I'll do is I'll probably give it another coat of lacquer tonight, um, and then it won't get any more until next week because I won't be here. That's a fact, I might get a couple of coats during the day tomorrow. Chucky. 
So for those, that, can you see that, Wayne? Yeah. Yeah. So all I've done is I marked out the centre and then I've just used the 50 mil force and a bit. And that's just on grip of jaws uh, holding that. Oh, let's change camera. This really was a bit of Heath Robinson furnace tonight. Um, so there's the finished piece. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. Uh, if I do say so well, myself, well. yeah, let's come. I think the other lab's probably better. For, uh, the other camera. It's a bit dark up this end of the workshop. Come on, come back. Gav Sidir says, I think this is one of my favourite pieces you've done, Scott. And that's where it is. Lovely piece, Bob. Cheers, thank you. Lovely piece. There we go. I love it. Jewelry says, I love it. Well done. As I said, I will sand these up. Um, and I probably will take the back off and clean that up. So thank you everyone for coming in. Um, let's bring the guys back. Lots of nice comments coming in, Scott. Excellent. I will go back and uh, look at all the comments. As I said, I can't see the chat tonight because it's... As you can see, I'm kneeling down because the laptop's balanced on a chair. There we go. <laughs> But we got around there. We got there in the end. Um, no, I really enjoyed that, and I really like that piece. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Wayne, for the inspiration. Um, what have we got on the rest of the week? Boy. Wayne is on tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock. Uh, then again, Friday lunchtime. When's the next Battle of the Makers? Do you know, Wayne? That'll next be Friday, I think. <laughs> Next Friday. Okay. But Friday night will be uh, Steve SK. Saturday morning cartoons at 4 o'clock, our time, 10 a.m. Central. I'm on Friday lunchtime as well, mate. Yeah, I did say Friday lunchtime. So, yeah, tomorrow night and Friday night. Yeah. And then uh, Wayne and Jamie will have premiere Sunday night. And then we start all over again on Monday. With the Virtual Craft Festival and next Saturday, I believe. Um, but don't hold me to that. It's really confusing looking at two cameras. So I'm going to hit the button. Um, thanks for everyone that comes in. And I shall see you all again next Thursday. And we will start the table lamp uh, next Thursday. But we've been saying we're going to do for a little while. So, Gerard for now. Yeah, Ger Gerard's, Gerard's seeing Friday night. Steve's got Terry on as guest. Of you, um. There we go. Terry from Chestnut. Okie dokies, I'm going to hit that button, if I find it, and I shall see you all next